For those of you who are tuning into Christ Jesus is Lord Ministries for the first time, I want to welcome you to the school room. This is where the Bible speaks. And as I would often tell people that we are not just talk, but we have substance and that substance is found within the Word of God. I'm not here to share my opinions are my feelings but i'm just here to present the word of god to us to exegete it in simple words to explain it so that we can have a better understanding of it and based on the knowledge he has given me so i want to welcome you so subscribe share hit the notification bell like and i promise you by the grace of god that you will be blessed by this study in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we're looking, as you can see on your screen, the subject is perfect peace and how to acquire it. And the question that one will ask is what is meant by perfect peace? Now perfect, we know that which is without flaw, that which is complete. And peace, it's a bit of a technical term when it comes to worldly definition and personality. If you were to step outside the realm of the Bible and the teachings of the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are those who have looked up the definition and many um, celebrated personalities from presidents to scientists to civil activists to doctors to all manner of people, um, corporate individuals, they would tell you and they'll start out by saying, peace is not the absence of war, but it is fighting against a common enemy, nuclear weapons, uh, poverty, ignorance. Some will say it is not, it, it, it is um, fighting against um, the war within it did tell you that it is um building faith and trust and they will give you all manner of worldly definition as to what they see as peace um to end war around you or to build faith and trust with other communities nations individuals and all that kind of thing. They'll tell you faith is not the absence of trouble. It's not the absence of storms. It's not the absence of fight. It's not the absence of of turmoil. They'll tell you it's not the absence of people having animosity one with another. But what actually is peace? Let us pray. Father, I want to invite your presence in our midst at this moment. Father, I want to ask that your perfect peace will take us over completely. Father, you have given us the remedy for perfect peace and it is found within your word. So Father, as we study and as we delve into this um, Bible teaching, that your presence will be with us. And that we will all feel the peace of God in our heart and in our lives. Father, lead and guide us through this study. And may souls be blessed and you be glorified and lifted high. And be extolled and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. We'll be looking at two portions of scriptures um, as we deal with this subject as our key portion of scriptures and they are Isaiah 26 verse 3 as you can see on the screen and Isaiah 48 verse 18 the, the former said thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee so here we see that in order for one to have perfect peace one's mind has to be stayed on God and because such a one mind is stayed on God, such a one trusts in God. Because one has to trust in God for his mind to be stayed in God. I'm not talking about having a mere intellectual belief in God. But that, this confidence, this unswerving loyalty, wherein comes what may, your faith is anchored 
in God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh unto him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So one has to be diligently seeking God. This um, trust, this perfect peace for one's mind to be stayed, it has to be like that of Eunuch, wherein it says that Eunuch walked with God and was not. So it means that Eunuch sought to get closer to God each day, to have a, a higher experience, to go on a higher plane than he had before founded in God Almighty. No. Chapter 48, verse 18 says, O oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Now, it gives us the prerequisite for peace here, and that is to hearken to God's commandment. To hearken just does not mean only to listen, but it means that you're going to give Attention to have an attentive ear to it and to be obedient to his commandment. You're going to listen to what it says and then you're going to be obedient to what it says. It says, Thou shalt not steal. So, by the mercies of God, that you, by his grace and by the power of his Holy Spirit, that you will not steal or kill or commit adultery or that you will love your neighbor as yourself or that you will not gossip or slander your neighbor and you will not work witchcraft and all the manner of the works of the flesh found in Galatians chapter 5 and verses 18, 19 and 20. No, we need to understand that the concept of peace in the Old Testament does not primarily refer to the absence of war, strife, trouble, storm, turmoil, or animosity, but rather it refers to the wholeness of the total health and the total welfare of an individual. It covers the sum total of God's blessing to a person who belongs to the covenant uh, relationship. Hence, uh, we could look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 through to 14 and I'll read for you verses 1 and 2. He said, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I Command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee an eye above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now verse 3 to verse 14 tells you the different blessings that are going to overtake you and that are going to come upon you. That you will be blessed in the city, in the field, the fruit of thy body, the cattle, the increase of your cows, the flocks of your sheep, your basket, your store, when you go out, when you come in, it tells you that you, Lord, will cause your enemies that rise against you, that they will come against you one way and flee seven ways. He said the Lord will establish you as an holy person or as holy people. If we're dealing with plurality now, and it tells you that the Lord will make you plenteous in goods, in fruit of your body, that's children, childbearing, in the fruit of your cattle, your ground, your fields, that is, and the land which the Lord gave unto your father. It tells you that God will establish you and all people of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. It also goes and says that the Lord will open his good treasure. And the heaven will give you rain unto land in sea, and he will bless the work of your hand. And he said, you will lend and not borrow. He said, the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above and not beneath. But the prerequisite is that if you walk in unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he command you this day to observe and to do them, and go not aside from any of the words which he command you this day, to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods. So when we speak of wholeness, 
health, happiness, the sum total, the welfare of an individual, as I've just read and give you in summary of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, 2 to 14. This is what it tells you a piece. How can one experience all this in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to the 14, and have not peace? And as my opening verse of scriptures say, He shall keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee, because they trust in thee. And then verse 18 of chapter 48 of Isaiah says, O oh, that thou wouldest hearken to my commandment, then would thy peace be as the rivers, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Have you ever seen the waves of the sea? They are never ending. The sea is never without wave. When we speak of righteousness, we must understand that we have no righteousness of our own, and that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, according to Ephesians chapter 1. No! The law of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 help us to discover why many Christians are living their lives in opposition to this beautiful law. The Bible is clear. In order for any one of us to experience real peace, perfect peace, a peace that transcends this world, a peace that this world cannot give, then our minds must be kept on Jesus the Christ. Kept on God. Not only must their mind be kept on him, but according to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in thee which was also in Christ Jesus. One cannot have the mind of Christ and have a mind of chaos, of turmoil, restlessness, fear, trouble, storms. And perplexities. Now, watch this. It is interesting to note that because many Christians, as they claim, are living without any form of peace. Yes, it is quite so. I know many. They have no peace. They are miserable. As the word itself, misery, is defined. And that's the truth. And some are maniacal. You can't even deal with them. They have no love. And one cannot have peace of God and be a loveless Christian. There is no such thing as a loveless Christian. Now, many, as I said, they are living in chaos, torment, confusion, and consternation, and I must ask, what exactly is Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 saying and Isaiah chapter 48 verse 18 saying? What are they saying? The answer to this question will catapult us into the Gospel of John chapter 14 and verse 15. And what does chapter 14, verse 15 of John say? It says, if you love me, keep my commandment. It goes right back to Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 18. That one who keeps God's commandment has peace. And not just peace. But the peace is as the rivers. And the righteousness as the waves of the sea. The Bible is clear, if we are in love with Christ, as we claim, we should not only say it, but most importantly, we should show this love by becoming obedient to his laws. We should love our fellow men as we love ourselves. And James 1 and verse 22 says we should be doers of the word and not only hear us. And this gives us a better and a clearer picture of what John 14, 15 is saying, which I've just quoted. We must become not only hearers of God's word, but also doers. But the big question is, how can we do what we do not know? 
you have activated the laws of destruction, punishment, and curses unto yourselves. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. And this is a serious portion of scripture. And it says, But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we see the opposite of the blessing. He says, If you be obedient, hearken to all his commandments, in verses 1 and 2 of chapter 28 here, it says the blessing will come up it, upon you and overtake you. The reverse is also true. If you be disobedient, you refuse to obey his commandments and hearken unto them, then the curse is going to descend upon you and overtake you. When something overtakes you, it means that it's in front of you. So when the curses are in front of you, nothing that you do will succeed. Nothing that you do will be blessed. In other words, you will live a life of torment and perplexity, and frustration, and chaos. So, you want to know what the curses are? Read from verse 15 through to verse 65 of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let us go forward. I will not read all that for you today. The Bible says you cannot separate the laws of God and expect to see the results of blessing in your life. If you refuse to do all his commandments, you are guilty. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15, I've just read it. So, let us make more sense of Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, Isaiah 48, verse 18, as we look at the whys. Why is it that many so-called Christians are not living with joy, peace, health, and happiness? Why is it that God's words are not manifesting in many of their lives? Why is it that God's people, Christians, are living at the mercies of the enemies, are the pagans and heathen? And I could continue to ask the wise, the wise, why is it that many Christians are the tail and not the end? Why do they have to borrow and not lend? Why? Is it that they have to flee before the enemies? Why is it that their baskets are not blessed? They can't even find a night's dinner or find food to eat. Yet still they serve the God who says, according to Psalm 50, He holds the cattle on a thousand hills are His. The foals of the forest, He knows them. He says, if you were hungry, He wouldn't ask you because the world is His. And all therein belongs to him. Now, why is it that so many Christians are dying of cancers? And all the most dreadful diseases upon the land. Why? Question is the word that I've read from the Bible here. Was it for the people of old? who lived during the time of Moses and were going through the wilderness, going into Canaan land, or the people who were in the promised land living during the time of Isaiah. Is the word of God for now or for then or is it for the future? Ask yourself that question. Then why are we seeing the manifestation of what is written in the word of God? Then if such is the case, we need to do some introspection, look into our life to see what sins are there that are blocking God from hearing our prayers, what iniquities are there that are preventing the blessings of God to come upon us, to overtake us. Now, many of us are giving the world a false picture of God by the manifestations of our physical lives. We are poor. We are sick, we are degenerate, we are at the tail, we are not at the head, we are at the mercy of our enemies, and many Christians are dying more rapidly from Egyptian diseases, more than the heathen and the pagans. And Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15 tells us, that None of the diseases of the Egyptians shall come upon you if you be obedient and hearken to 
the commandments of God. You read verse 12 of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 7. That God says, if you hearken and be obedient to his commandments, his words, then to his voice, then none of the diseases which are killing off the pagans and the heathens will come upon you. You will live a life that is holistic, a life that is complete, and your welfare will be whole. It's speaking about John, 1 John 3, 2, I wish above all things that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. You might be asking, am I not dealing with perfect peace? Yes, I'm dealing with perfect peace. Remember I told you at the onset that in the Old Testament, when it speaks of peace, it not just speaking about the absence of war, of chaos, of turmoil, of storm, of trouble, but it has to do with with the wholeness of the individual, has to do with his health, has to do with blessings, has to do with his happiness, has to do with his entire welfare. So let us move on. Now, what are the answers to the wise? Come with me as we seek to find out. Someone needs to know that the God of the scriptures the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Daniel, the God of Joseph, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the God of the apostles, and the God of the prophets is the same God who raised Lazarus from the dead. And we can read that in John chapter 11, verse 38. 2 to 44, where we called for Lazarus. After four days, Lazarus was wrapped in his grave cloth, placed in a cave, and by that he stinks, and he began to rot. Rigor mortis sets in, and they said, By now he stinks. And Jesus stood and said, Lazarus, come forth. If Jesus had not called Lazarus by name, and said, Come forth, all the dead from the time of Adam until the time that he was standing there would have come forth out of the grave because he is the resurrection and the life so if you are in a place of war and chaos turmoil and strife troubles and storm know that jesus is the resurrection and the life and he can resurrect you from your situation and put you into the place where there is life and life abundance in himself we need to know that God is the same one who parted the Red Sea and set the many captives free, including me. And you can find that in Exodus 14, 21. And now, this God who walks on water is the author of perfect peace. And he is still living in the lives of the obedient. And he's doing the same powerful miracles today that he did in the past, in the wilderness, in Egypt, in the time of the prophet, in the time of the apostles, in the time of the church in the wilderness, during the dark ages, during the reformation period, and even in the period of the renaissance and the era of enlightenment coming down to this postmodern generation is the same God at work, working in the lives of his people, keeping his people and keeping them in peace from all that is going on in the world. There are many who are frustrated and flustered. They are worried about Armageddon. They are worried about what is about to come upon the earth. The Bible says, Christ told his disciples that men hearts will be failing them for fear of the things which will come upon the earth. Now, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 tells us, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. When you have perfect peace, fear has no place in your life. And as I was telling you about the definition, one lady says, uh, peace is the absence of fear. And that is just a part of the definition for peace. The problem with many of us is that we want to make God into our little Santa Claus. You know, Christmas Santa Claus, well, this Hollywood fairy tale thing wherein a man 
on a on a on a, on a slate with reindeers and throwing off gifts going down the chimney and putting gifts at christmas tree or fireplace and eating milk and cookies um jesus is not that god the father is not that he's not a son of class who give gifts to people but the Bible tells us concerning gifts that Jesus, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. This is the God we serve. And for him to give us gifts, captivity must be led captive. But many of us, even though God himself at the cross through Jesus the Christ, led captivity captive and gave gifts to men many of us have the devil holding our gifts ransom in his storehouses because john 10 says he come to kill steal and destroy so he has stolen many blessings and have it in his storehouses and many are going about like living dead zombies can't do anything tied up wrapped up with the lies of the devil and with his tricks with his deception that god doesn't love them and god doesn't care for them because if god had care for them then they wouldn't be suffering the way they are but god tells you if you keep his commandment let your mind be stayed upon them then you will have perfect peace and if you keep his commandment and hearken to his voice be obedient you turn to chapter 21 to 14 you will receive all these blessings and the blessings will not only descend upon you but they will overtake you they will be going before you waiting for you you will be just following behind the blessings and enjoying them other think god is a puppet that they can just pull string whatever hand or feet or the mouth and he talks he moves he walks he does whatever they want him to do god is not a puppet and you are not any puppet master when it comes to god many of us want to tell god what he should do for us whilst refusing to do what he asks of us we want to make God into the creature and we the creators. But just remember, God says in Isaiah 42 verse 8 that he will not give his glory to any nor his praises to graven images. There are many who are taking God's praise unto themselves and glory unto themselves just like Herod in the book of Acts. And what happened? Worms ate him alive when they spoke and the people declared, more, oh, it is not the voice of a man, it is the voice of a God. And he took the praise unto himself and the angel struck him and worm ate him alive right there on his podium where he was giving his speech. So do not pray with God. Do not joke with God. God will not give his glory. He is God. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the conquering land of the tribe of Judah. He is the one. And he is mighty in battle according to Psalm chapter 24 verse 8 through to 10. He is the king of glory. And the Lord mighty in battle. Now we pray for blessing many of us, but totally forget about the law that tells us what to do in order to get the blessings. And I have mentioned to a four, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through to 2. Please read it and come to memory. We pray for healing, but healing is far from us. And we refuse to stop practicing evil. We refuse to activate the law of forgiveness in order for our forgiveness to flow from God to us. And Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14 tells us, and I'll read it right in our hearing. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 through to 18 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It is ironic. I have seen many in the churches 
um, having grudges with each other. Yet still they come to church on a Sabbath or they go to church on a Sunday and they will pray, they will preach, they will teach and they will um, get involved in activities and they will sing songs of praise unto God and yet still they have heart against one another. Now the Bible tells us that we're only mocking God, we only are only fooling ourselves and we need to be reminded that God cannot be manipulated, neither does he manipulate anyone. He says what he means and he means what he says and many of us are always trying to pull down God's ears to our many prayers for healing, health and blessing. But Galatians 6 and verse 7 tells us that God is not mocked. He says you will reap that which you sow. If you look into the world around you, the natural world, you will see that whatsoever a farmer sows in his field, whether it be spinach, corn, lentils, whether it be apples, uh, whatever he put forth, wheat, barley, hay, rye, you name it, beans, peas, that is what is going to reap when the time for harvest comes. We need to understand that God is not deaf. But it is our iniquities, it is your iniquity that is blocking God's powerful ears from hearing you. God says in his word that when you make many prayers, he will not hear you. And even if you go and hide in the depths of the sea, there he will command a serpent to bite you. I have seen growing up that many will pray. But their life remains the same. And we know that there is a law which says nothing remains constant. But bear with me, I've seen many people for decades in the church houses, for decades in doing the activities, for decades singing, for decades preaching, for decades being the first elder, being the deacon, being the bishop, being the choir director, being the head of this department, that department, and their life. If you should check them today, from the day which I became a Christian over two decades ago, their life is no different. The only thing is that they get older and now they should be growing up and they get weaker because old age has come upon them. They are just as poor as they were before they became a Christian. They are just as jobless as they were before they became a Christian. There is no progress in their lives. They are not a blessing to humanity to God's church, to God's cause, or even to themselves. We need to understand that if you refuse to genuinely forgive others of their evil, God will not answer your prayers. God says, Jesus says, if you go to the altar to offer your gift and you remember and that there is a brother or sister who have heart against you, you should leave the gift at the altar, go and make it right with the person, and then come back and offer your gift. But sadly, many are not doing it today. They are offering gifts, still offering gifts. They hate me, they hate you, they have grudges against, they slander me, they slander you, and they gossip me, they gossip you, they gossip their neighbor, they gossip Sister Sue, they gossip Brother um, Kev, and you name it. Yet still, they think that God will uh, 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 accept their gift. What you need to do, or uh, what they need to do, is to stop praying. And go and make it right with people. And then return 
and make it right with God and then pray and God will answer and his ear will be opened up unto your prayer. The truth is, some of you will die in your sins. Just as Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees. Check John chapter 8. Because you only read those aspects of the Bible which talks about blessing, healing, happiness, peace, and joy. You refuse to read and do the prerequisites that will propel you into the blessings, the healing, the happiness, the peace, and the joy. And so it is that many will never see, neither experience the beautiful promises of our God, nor live in the fulfillment and the overflowing of those blessings. I know it will be challenging to read <laughs> what you are seeing on the screen or to hear the truth that I'm bringing forth to you. But the truth according to scripture will set you free. John 8.32 said, And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, you need to know that if you are set free by the truth who Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, then you are free indeed. What more can you want? I'm telling you the truth. It's up to you if you want to listen, if you want to subscribe, if you want to leave a comment. But the truth is the truth, and I'm here to help you. So, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. What is the truth? He shall keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed upon him. And if you hearken to his commandments, then your peace will be like the rivers, your righteousness as the waves of the sea. Whenever God sends a word or a message to you, you must respond to it. You should not seek to curse or to hate the messengers. You will be doing yourself much harm if you do, as you will be activating a law of curse says, on your life. And that of your seed, according to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God told Abraham, They who curse you, I will curse. They who bless you, I will bless. Now that we have a simple understanding, or that we have an understanding as to how spiritual operation, or spiritual laws operate, and the laws of God work, let us go a bit deeper and become more personal. The Bible is clear. There is absolutely, quote, no peace for the wicked. Isaiah 48, 22. A person who is tormented, a person who is miserable, doesn't know God. And that person, according to Isaiah 48, verse 22, is a wicked person. So if you miserable, if you are tormented, if you are maniacal, and if you are... They want to say schizophrenic, they're putting all kind of clinical, psychological name to people who refuse to live according to the laws of God and are wicked. And when the curse comes upon them, whether it be madness or whatever spirit comes upon them, they give it all kinds of psychological um, names, all kinds of psychological names. However, the Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. So no matter how you see a person puts on, it doesn't matter the material possession, the accolades that they have, the letters, the degrees, the businesses, the cars, whatever they possess, if they do not know Christ. <laughs> Isaiah 48, 22 is applicable to them. I need to remind you that the wicked is anyone who is going against God's commandment without genuine repentance. You need to know, those of you in the air, my voice, that there are only two kinds of people on this earth. The wicked and the righteous. The wicked are they who are not following after God and His commandments, His laws, His statutes, His precepts, His judgments. The righteous are those who are obedient to the word of God and following after the constitution that God has laid down, which is the book, the Bible, Genesis to Revelation 
and adhering and living according to the Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit to be obedient to the Word of God. Two people, it doesn't matter how morally upstanding they are in society, in the sight of God they are wicked. The wicked can never activate the law of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 and Isaiah chapter 48 verse 18 because perfect peace comes from walking in obedience to the principles of God and for you to have peace like the rivers you have to be in obedience to God's commandments and for your righteousness to be as the waves of the sea you have to hear God's commandment and do them many people are fasting and praying without repenting of their sin this type of activity will make their situation sometimes worse as the spirit of disobedience attacks their demonic activities. Satan will surely answer you as he sends in more demons of infirmity, poverty, confusion, torments, and chaos in your life, making your condition more complicated than before. Now, I want to read us um, Proverbs chapter. One, I read us Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 28 through to 30. It says, then shall they, I'm going to take it further and read it for you. Verse 24, he said, Because I have called, and you refused, and I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but you have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. So right now he said that there is no peace. You, when you have no peace, because you refuse to hear him, you despise his reproof when he reproved you, and you refuse to listen to his word, and you set at naught his counsels, that is his word, his commandments, his preaching, his life statutes, you will not obey it. You despised it. He said, we laugh at your calamity. Picture God in heaven laughing at you, a mortal man or woman. Picture that. The God who is from everlasting to everlasting. Psalm 90 verse 1. Picture a God who is immortal, omnipotent, omniscient, all powerful, laughing at your calamity. And the calamity and he mocks you when you fear commit, when you become fearful. No peace. You fear commit as desolation. Your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When he speaks of a whirlwind, he's speaking of a tornado. And when you see that twister swirls around, it destroys everything in its path. So what God here is saying is that that's how chaotic your destruction is going to be because you refuse to be obedient to hearken to his commandment and to be obedient to him. Now, he says, when distress and anguish comes upon you, so you, you are distressed, you're going to be stressed out, you're going to be burdened, and you never know, you'll be suicidal too. Anguish comes upon you. So you'll be pining away. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. You see the tragedy that befalls you. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. I'm here to tell you that there are many here and this YouTube platform who hate knowledge, true knowledge. They go with the false, the spurious, they go with that which sounds good, which does not disturb their life. They still can 
go to their clubs, they still can drink their booze, they still can smoke, they still can have their sex with their girlfriend and call themselves a Christian. They can go to their confessions because a priest can pray them out of purgatory and limbo and hell and they have a place in heaven. But I'm telling you, <laughs> the Bible said for that they hate the knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They will none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. And when God leaves you up to be filled with your own devices, it means that you'll be filled with the devices which are given to you by the doctrines of devils because you will give heed to seducing spirits and heed the doctrines of devils you too might believe that one save always save it's not so go check out the former video before this one which you will see what Jesus has to say concerning one save always save if it is biblical and if it has any foundation and can stand on the word of the living God now I'm not talking too much about myself but what's better example to use as I was a tormented confused broken soul just like many of you are a mind that is stayed on the word of God will be in perfect peace because such a mind is out of the devil's territory the Bible in Philippians 2 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus whenever we practice living the truth that we are teaching according to scriptures then our minds will be peaceful our lives will be peaceful our health will be in top shape we deal with completeness holism uh, holistic um, life rather with dealing with um, total happiness health now we will be excited about God as we can testify to the world that the Bible is the life manual with all the solutions to our problem. John chapter 3, 1 John rather 3 and 2 rather, 3 John 2 says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So we see a threefold um, blessing there. Wish above all things you prosper being good health and that your soul prospers and that when you talk about perfect peace that you prosper your soul prospers which is your body and you prosper and you be in good health peace the definition for peace as I bring this studies to its close I want to let you know that it is either you make up your mind to give God exactly what he asks for or you will continue to be wasted by satanic arrows and attacks because there will be absolutely no real peace, joy and happiness in your life without your mind being stayed on the powerful words of the living God and by keeping all his commandments. All the stuff in this world can never replace God's perfect peace you need to remember it is God who watches my back and he too is willing to watch your back it is God who watches my back not man not bodyguards with guns and military training but God, I read you Isaiah 52 verse 12 as we seek to close the study. It says, For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. This is what God is saying. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your real reward. Saying that God is saying you should not be fearful. You don't have to be agitated and as if you are scared or fearful. 
You don't have to be in a rush. Or, 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 you don't have to be hustling and rushing when you are going out. And you don't have to go by flight. When somebody is going by flight, in other words, they are fleeing. Fleeing from something which is dangerous or someone which is dangerous. Which, by and large, might overtake them and destroy them. But the prophet here, a God says, no, not so. I will be, I will go before you, and I will be your rear reward. When God is your rear reward, in other words, a definition for it, if you were to look up the meaning of rear reward, it's he'll be your rear guard in other words he will guard you from behind he will protect you from behind so he's going before you protecting you from front and he's protecting you from the back just as he was doing the children of israel in the wilderness he was a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night so he protect them both behind and before so it is god is saying that he will do for us so we started with the key portion of scriptures isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 and he will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee because he trusted in him and isaiah 48 Verse 18, Who that thou has hearkened unto my commandment, then would thy peace be as the rivers, the river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Do you want your peace to be as the river and your righteousness as the waves of the sea? Are you longing for perfect peace? If you be obedient to the word of God, it can all be yours. You have heard what I had to put forth. You can either accept it or reject it. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. God bless. For those of you who are subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Help the channel to grow. Leave a comment. Hit the notification bell. Like. May God bless you. Keep you until the next upload. Have a good day and share these Bible studies with your friends, your families, even your enemies. In the name of Jesus, God bless. Bye-bye.